Happy Friday, everybody. How's it going? Merrick Bennett here, Comics Workshop, coming to you live from MerrickBennett.com. And starting off with a thank you to the patrons over on the Patreon for making this possible. Got my pencil, got my paper, got an eraser. We'll use that today. And I also have some black inking tools, just a simple felt tip pen, watercolor marker. We'll come back to those. So um, we had some really fun Friday live draws. Last week we did a tree with rings. Um, the week before we were doing branches and making forests with birds in them. Um, so I thought today we'd add another dimension in. Um, we'll do a couple branches. I've been looking at wintry scenes. It is snowing here. So let's start off our page just by roughing in a margin frame around the outside edge. I think a wintry scene is in order. Um, we've been ice skating a lot on the pond here. So I've got an ice skating scene I wanna try out. And let's see what happens when we draw this together. You can follow along, you can copy, or you can take it in your own direction and change things around as much as you want. Um, let's see here. So I'm gonna start off with a shoreline. And the shoreline, I'd recommend sort of making it halfway up the page and kind of curving it around like this. And this is the edge of the pond. And give it a little back curve like that. So this will this will be the land up here, and this will be the ice down here. All right. And what we're doing is we're going to look down on this pond. So we've been looking sort of straight across at trees, and these trees kind of float in the imagination here. And that's really fun to draw. But today I'm going to change this up. I said a new dimension. We're going to sort of lift up above this and look down on it so we can see a bigger scene. And what I'm really interested in is where stories come from as we look across that scene and, and explore it. So let's start, we've got the ice right here and the land up here. So let's add a couple trees, maybe a forest around this pond, a wintertime forest or a park. I'm gonna do double lines like that to make a trunk. Doesn't that look like a trunk going right off the top of the picture there? And well, it will look like a trunk in a moment. And we'll do another one over here pointing up. Maybe another one, if I start, see how the bottoms start about even here? If I start the bottom higher up, let's see what that does. There's another tree. Doesn't it look like that tree's further away? It's kind of further up the land here. That's kind of a cool effect, very simple effect to give suddenly a sense of depth. They're not all sort of, they're not all at the same level. They're not even on like a hill or anything. They're, they're like one's further away and one's closer. Let's try another one further away back, maybe up here somewhere. You can kind of just place a couple trees, maybe three, four, five, six trees is all you need. Let's do um, my own favorite kind of tree. I'll do a base here. I'll do a stump like that. And then I'll rough in just like uh, pine cone branches. This is a short little pine cone tree, short little pine tree, or maybe it's a hemlock. When I cartoon like this, it's hard to tell the difference. Maybe another one, how about one going off the top of the page or off the top outside our border there? Put some branches on there. Bring that down, scratch, 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 and it goes up off the top. These, maybe these are oak trees, right? We'll give them a couple branches, a couple branches with twigs coming off of them, maybe a branch that doesn't go off the top of the page and another that does maybe a thick branch with a doubled line. Remember we're penciling here so we can always erase, right? We can erase anything. If you put a branch on and you decide you don't want a branch there, you can erase it. But you know, trees, they, they like to grow branches wherever there's space because they're looking for that sunlight when they have leaves. So let's grow a couple branches up into here. Maybe two thick branches coming off this trunk. Right? And you don't, if it looks too regular, add a couple twigs. And then check out the trees around you. If you have trees around you, go out and look at them and see if you could figure out how you would cartoon them. That's starting to look like a really cool open space, isn't it? That you could walk up and wander up or wander down and come to the ice. So let's turn our attention to the ice. We can, we can you know, go on as long as we want adding little twigs and trees. The further down, the closer they come to the pond, the further up, the further away they are. And that's giving us a nice sense of depth there. I feel like I could wander in, float in and wander through this picture and explore. 
let's turn our attention to the pond. I'm, I'm going to put myself on this pond here. You can put yourself in. Simplest way to put yourself in is, I mean, you could just do an eyeball. This one's walking, but the moment we put ice skates on it, it'll be ice skating, right? I can put a little, little ice skates on either foot. Um, if you want to go a little fancier, eyeballs are simple to draw. They're really fast to draw. I might come back to that. Let me try a different one. Simpler is a stick figure. I like to give my stick figures a little triangle body. And then two feet going down and maybe arms out to the side. Oh, that I like the arms. They really add some expression to it. It gives it body language. And look at that. I put it sort of in the middle. So suddenly it seems to be enjoying the whole picture. If you put yourself off to the side, either side, um, you can uh, you can make it sort of unbalanced. I'm sort of in the middle here. And however you go out, if you go out on the ice, you know, maybe you have a little cane to steady yourself or something or, or something to help you ice skate here. Um, the next step up, I guess, I like to make myself into an animal. So I'll, I'll add bunny ears. I mean, why not? Maybe closed eyes there, a smile and a bunny nose. I mean, why not? Why not have a little fun as you draw? You know, I'm going to flesh out my arms here. Flesh out my legs a little more with just a doubled line there. See how that makes it kind of a cartoon character instead of a stick figure. My bunny's always barefoot, but I'll put some ice skates on, just little curved lines. You might be a bunny or a cat, or you might be a stick figure or an eyeball. Whatever you want, little bumps for fingers. Nobody's gonna inspect and count the fingers on my bunny, maybe a little cotton tail. And you know, you can add scarves, hats, mittens, whatever. My bunny never wears a hat because it covers up the ears. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is so fun to draw, you know, to draw with you and sort of see how if we're if we're drawing together or if you're drawing with a friend, you can connect your you can connect your pictures side by side to make a bigger lakescape, you know, continue your shoreline and add something more in there. Maybe there's a giant tree from last week in there. Um, you can create landscapes like this. You can change details. You could work your friends in here. I could put my friends in here skating. Maybe I'll put my dog carrying a stick, right? And give her a little bean body and a little curly tail. Four little stick legs. She always comes out as I'm ice skating and she brings me sticks and tries to get me to chase her. So I just put a little round head with two eyes and a stick in her mouth. Right? And since we're so we're kind of far away from this scene, so I don't have to get lots and lots of details there. But maybe there's a little story here, right? A little track that she's made as she wanders around. Maybe she's been running. Maybe I take this dotted line. Let's take this dotted line and show all the places she's been sniffing around. Go behind that tree, up and around behind this tree. Maybe around it a couple times as she sniffs things up around and behind it. We'll go behind this tree. Remember, the trees that are further up are further back. So maybe she goes way back behind that tree. See, I just leave the dotted line off. She comes back around. I can pick that up and take that as far as I want. Suddenly we have a sense of story. Suddenly there's like this invitation to us to like, to look at this and wander around and reconstruct time backwards or forwards if you want and follow that and figure out where this character's been and how she got to that point, right? Let's do the same thing with Rabbit here, only we're gonna follow an ice skating track. And this is gonna be a long line. There's gonna be, maybe we'll put a lot of lines because Rabbit's been going around and around and around. Um, oh, we got a suggestion here. Liz says, how about a long scarf on the bunny? You know, that could really help. Let's try that. Um, I like that comment. That could really help to give a sense of movement. So if Bunny's going forward, sometimes Bunny skates backwards, but if Bunny's going forward, maybe a long scarf would trail out like this, like a comically long scarf. I like to put a little fringe on it. Oh, I like that, Liz. That's a great idea. Thank you. And then we'll put stripes all along it to make it a little more colorful looking. Maybe another end here another fringe. Oh, and that, that really adds with the kicked leg and the, the hands out. It helps the, um, 
it ha it helps the uh, the rabbit spin and move a little more. Oh, Elena says, "Ahoy, Marek. Ahoy, Elena. Yaksamash." And um, all right, so we're going to follow the bunny's trail. Maybe the bunny's been doing like I'm going to do sort of a flattened figure eight here. Zoop, and maybe the bunny's been around and around and around and around go around as many times or maybe more times than you'd think. But I don't want to make it super dark. So that's going to be like a light trail. And maybe every now and then Bunny goes out and does a spin and loops around here and does a spin and goes off the edge over there. Oh, that's looking really fun. And comes in on this side and spins around and goes around the dog. Doesn't go off the ice though. Whoops. Spins around and around and turns and turns and turns and turns and turns and goes off over here. You can just kind of make it up. I'm not going to do too many lines close to the bunny because I want a little bit of breathing space around that figure to help that figure stand out. Oh, good. Liz likes the scarf. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you approve. And um, oh, Miss Heiler's class likes the scarf. I love little details like that, that, um, that add a lot to the character. You know, there's a story to the scarf. I just realized. I drew those stripes on it. This scarf is a long scarf knit by somebody who really cares for Rabbit and Rabbit's family. And as she knit this, she was thinking of Rabbit and then she gave it to Rabbit on Rabbit's birthday several years ago. You know, there's a story to every little piece in this picture. And sometimes you draw it and the story suddenly appears in your mind. I find the story almost always comes out of drawing the picture not the other way around. Some people think you have to have a story in your mind to start drawing a story. I think the story kind of comes out of finding these trails, these lines, these, these images that we put onto the, onto the page in front of us and then reconstructing what might have come before or what's going to come after. I mean, what do you think is going to happen when this Greta dog here brings a stick out onto the ice and gets in the way and Rabbit stumbles over her or something? There's a whole story there, right? Ms. Heiler says, oh, it's not as long as the Doctor Who scarf I knitted for my oldest. Oh my goodness, you knitted a 23 foot scarf? Let me see, that would be like whoop, back to here or something. That would be a different kind of trail, wouldn't it? You could have like rabbit walking through the woods and this scarf trailing behind and winding through the trees. Great ideas for pictures and comics. I love drawing with you guys because you always come up with good ideas. Any other ideas, feel free to submit them here. I'm just kind of making this up and we're finding our way together as we draw. I think Rabbit's been skating here a long time. Doesn't that look cool? But you know, there's something even before Rabbit came in to skate. Let's see. I'm thinking Rabbit got here somehow. So let's put Rabbit's boots at the side of the pond. I'll just do two little bent tubes like that, little some tracks here on the ice, maybe the first ice skating trail coming out from there. And of course, before Rabbit took off boots and put on ice skates, there's going to be like a little rabbit trail coming up, going up the hill there, coming down to the pond here. And maybe, you know, so there's a couple things you could do. We could have that trail go off the top like that, and then it looks like this hill just goes up and up and up and maybe up to Rabbit's house or something. Or we could actually put in sort of a horizon behind. I'll just draw it as a line and then we'll erase it. A horizon line kind of curving along here and then erase that horizon line where the trees go in front of it. Suddenly this forest isn't so deep and dark and, and hilly. You can see the sky there and maybe there's like a little house with a chimney and a door and a window. And you can make that as detailed as you want. Maybe there's a little woodshed too. And maybe there's a little tree, some apple trees, all the same size in a row next to the house, tucked behind that big tree. Just drawn with little lines. Oh, that's kind of a cool, I like that. I, I like how that looks because it starts to hint at like a whole, maybe there's another house up here. It's not so lonely and woodsy. Suddenly it's like little rabbit village is nearby. Maybe there's a little smoke coming out of each chimney. 
Rabbit's not so alone anymore. Suddenly this pond with rabbit and dog, it, they're not so alone anymore. All right, Liz likes the horizon, good. Yes, it's perspective, right? It's, it's um, you know what this is, we're getting point of view. Where When we were drawing the tree last week, we I wasn't really thinking a point of view at all. I was just like drawing branches. I'm gonna focus my camera a little more here just to make sure it's in focus because I wanna see the details of those branches, right? All those little, little points and all the little details there. But that now here suddenly, you know what we're doing here? We, we do have a point of view. We're floating above this pond and we're looking down on it, right? So there's another character we can bring in here. I think we know where Rabbit lives. Or maybe Rabbit kind of wanders around. Maybe that trail doesn't go directly back to the house. It's a little more interesting, I think, if Rabbit kind of came from somewhere else. Maybe came through the trees, visited a friend, then came down. Oh, and let's remember Greta's track. Maybe she goes off there and she comes over here. She's just little dots in the snow. And then she goes back up, follows up that trail. Now we're getting a real story. You know, if you want to, we can add in our friends, the chickadees. My friends, the chickadees. I don't know what birds you have around you. Maybe they're flying through. Maybe they also kind of curl around a tree and around another tree and loop and fly. Watch how they fly. They, they don't actually fly in straight lines. They fly in little whoop, whoop, whoop sort of bumps. I don't know if that, that won't quite capture what I want though. I want this chickadee to be flying through this scene. And maybe I will, where she goes in front of the tree and behind the tree, I'll just erase. Maybe that can loop it there. Zip, zip, zip. And we're getting this point of view of all these characters coming through and we can reconstruct their stories by looking at their trails or looking at the lines they make on the page, right? That's what we do here in comics. Um, let's try one other thing. I kind of wanted to try this with you. Let's see if this works. I'm going to put a big branch way up close. This is like, this is like you, you see the pond and then there's this boom, big branch way up close, right? And it's, it's going to be a little darker. Maybe it's got like another branch there. And maybe that's going to interrupt. That is going to interrupt my dog trail, isn't it? Let me try that again. Let me try that again. Like I said, we're kind of making this up, figuring out where these parts go. I have a little more space over here. Let me put that branch across the picture here. Just see if this works. It'll be darker because it's up close. That's like a big shadowy branch in front of the picture there. And then we can put a little bird on it. Looking down, I'm gonna give it that Teardrop shape, little stick feet, little tail, little wings, see? Maybe another branch coming off here to make it a branch, right? And then I'll probably not draw these lines right up to it. Kind of like that, that emphasizes point of view. That makes me feel like I'm, I'm up in the trees. Maybe there is a little branch coming by here. Makes me feel like I'm up in the trees looking down at the pond. You know, that's an option. You don't have to have that. You can just leave it as a distant view of the pond, but it's kind of cool to put this, these characters in the foreground looking down. I think this bird should probably be fairly shadowy. Now I've got a plan, right? And we are at almost 20 minutes, so we are about out of time. I'll just show you the next step. Remember our pie process. Pencil, get some feedback, which you've been giving me all along, and then ink, um, and inking gets your picture ready for people to read it. So next, I'm going to come in with my, my thin line felt tip pen, my chisel tip marker, whatever good black inking tools I have, and I will come in, and I'll do my border first. This is the frame around the picture, and look how that pops off the page, makes it much more readable. Oh, this is so nice. I, I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out, <laughs> but it's so cool to get your suggestions and see how these stories can develop. I feel like we have 
this character. We have we know a little bit about this character because these little details came out as we drew them. We have this other character who wants to do something different. We have these other characters flying through the space. We have a hint of community and neighbors and a lot of space to explore. I'm gonna come in next with my thin line felt tip marker and, um, and I will start inking my main characters, I think. I think I'll do my characters first. And then I'll go in and do those trees. All right, we're about out of time, folks. So thank you so much for joining us. I would love to see your, um, I'd love to see whatever kind of scenes you came up with as we doodled together today whatever kind of scenes are in your imagination. So I'm gonna ink all this and I'll post the finals. Maybe I'll even color it. I'll post the finals over at the Patreon um, and you can get there from MerrickBennett.com or go directly to patreon.com slash Merrick Bennett. You can join and help us make more of these live draws. We've got some cool videos coming out. I just finished a, a surprise tall video that walks you through an amazing, even more detailed landscape and ends with a surprise, but I'll let you go find that. Um, that's on the Instagram and the uh, the artworks all appearing over at the Patreon. So this will be out there too. And if you go over to the Patreon on the community page, you can post your own artwork. That's really cool. Then everybody can see that too. All right, folks, thank you so much for drawing. Thank you for your ideas. We will be in touch. Keep drawing, draw every day and, um, and, uh, have a good weekend.